Howdy! How's everybody today? I got a request from Michelle to do a tutorial on how to make paper. So that's what we're going to tackle today. See if I can show y'all how to do this in my studio without making a horrible, horrible mess. And <laughs> I, I really enjoy doing this outside because it is a messy process. Um, I think I might be able to tackle this and do it so that I don't make a huge, huge mess. But let's see how this goes here. First thing you're going to need is some kind of a receptacle to mix your paper pulp in. Now you can do this in a blender, but I'm not going to do that in the studio. Uh, I'm going to do this a little bit different here in the studio. It's going to be on a small scale, but you'll get the basic gist of this. But you can do this in a blender. Uh, probably be a little bit easier than what I'm going to do. But you're going to need some kind of a receptacle to mix it in and some kind of a mixing device. I'm going to use a stick blender for this. I've got bowls and a stick blender. I'm sure you all know what a stick blender is. Modern gadget of the modern day age. Now, in addition to that, you're going to need two other items, and that is called paper, and <laughs> you're going to need some water. So, we're going to take a bowl and we're going to take some paper. Now, you can use any kind of paper you want to use. You can use typing paper, copy paper, uh, you can use parchment paper, you can use pages out of magazines and newspapers, you can use cotton paper, uh, you can use rice paper, you can use any kind of paper you want to use. I suggest staying away from anything that has a lot of ink in it, like newspaper print news and magazine print, because the ink in it tends to make your paper look really muddy instead of nice, clean paper. Uh, you can use a dyed paper if you want to, you know, if you've got paper, say, that you tea dyed or, or uh, maybe used an acrylic dye or something on and you want to add more texture to it or make it look a little more interesting, you want to throw that in with your, your pulp, you can do that. I today am going to be using watercolor paper. And mainly because it soaks up water really good. It's white. It, it'll come out looking nice and clean, I believe. We'll see how this goes. Now, it's been a long time since I've made paper, uh, but that's no excuse. Uh, it's a pretty simple process. And you can use scissors on it. You can tear it up. You can do whatever you want to do. But you're going to want nice, small pieces of paper. So we're going to tear up this paper here. I'm going to try to keep this so that the camera can see what I'm doing here. Um, but just, just little pieces of paper you're going to put in your bowl. You don't want to get it too full. It's always better to have more water uh, because, you know, the water can soak up out of it. The water can uh, evaporate out of it. But if you get it too thick, then it's a little bit difficult to work with. But you're going to need some paper to work with. Now, so I'm starting out with this um, watercolor paper, and it's nothing fancy. It's just it came in a pad of watercolor paper. You know, it's just just paper. There's nothing magical about it. There's nothing <laughs> fancy about it. It's just paper, and just tear it up into little bitty pieces. Cut it up however you want to do it. I mean, you know, there's uh, nothing. Uh, fancy about whether you use scissors or not on it. Um, you know, the edges ain't going to matter because it's going to be pulp when we get done. So this is how it starts out. I mean, this is this is about as exciting as watching paint dry, ain't it? Ripping up this paper. This is the monotonous part of this. It gets more interesting as things go on. So you bear with me here while we rip up paper. Just keep tearing up little pieces of it and put it in the bowl. I mean, you can do this while you're watching TV or something, you know, you need something to do. Just keep your hands busy, ripping up paper, put it in a sack. And when you get ready to make paper, you got plenty of pulp to work with. We just keep tearing this up. I'm going to go here for just a little bit on this and show you how this works. We want to get enough paper in there that we can make some pulp with. 
I mean, you know, when you stop to think about it, even the paper, this paper, when when it was bought, it started out as pulp. I take it and they add water to it and then they press it out, let it dry, cut it into sheets, make uh, make a ream of paper out of it, a notebook or however they're going to do it. But yeah, I've been doing this for a long time. Oh, I was going to bring something in to show you too. I've got a wall hanging that I did. Oh gosh, been back in the 80s, I guess, that uh, I'd made using a mold for the paper. And it hangs in my bathroom. Uh, it's a little fish that I put on a uh, rice paper background and framed. And I painted the fish up real pretty bright colors, you know, like you'd see in the ocean. And that hangs in my bathroom. You can make wall hangings out of paper by molding it. You can use this in your journals that you're making. You can make stationery out of it. You can use it as a background on your greeting cards if you're doing uh, greeting cards. Whatever kind of paper craft you're into. Well, like with the wall hangings, it doesn't even have to be paper craft. I'm, you can use them as embellishments on your gifts. That's not quite enough. I'm going to keep going here. I want more than a dab when we when we make the pulp, so we're going to keep going. You can use tissue paper, too. Um, you know, any kind of paper will work in this. I try not to put anything fibrous, you know, like if you're going to add any threads or anything like that into it until I get it in the on the screen or in the molds or whatever if I'm going to add something like that to it because it tends to clog up the blender. Ask me how I know that. <laughs> Just like with anything, you know, trial and error, you learn as you go. But you just want it tore up. Now, this is going to be one complete piece of paper when I get done here in the bowl. So you'll see how, how this works up. And this, this is, uh, let's see, 50 pound um, watercolor paper. It's nine by 12 inch sheets. Just so, you know, for whatever future reference you might want there. Now, I'm going to add something else to this. You can get this. Now, th mine is old. Lord have mercy. I've had this for flipping ever. I don't even know if they make, these companies make this stuff anymore. But they're, this is uh, from a company called Rycraft Incorporated. And they make um, uh, cotton sheets of uh, paper for uh, making paper. I can't make it much clearer than that. Uh, they call it linter paper. L-I-N-T-E-R, linter paper. And you can make medallions, uh, felt pads. Uh, it's as easy to follow instructions. Ceramic stamps not included. So, you know, if you want to stamp it out or whatever. But I'm going to take a piece of this paper and I'm going to... This is, this is more of a chipboard style of paper. Here, I'm going to use the paper scissors on it. There we go. It, you can see, it's more of a, a cardboardy type of paper, chipboardy type. And I'm just going to chop some of this up into this. I want little pieces because I don't want it um, to clog up the blender. It soaks up water real well. Linter paper, this is called. I'll just chop a little side off there. It adds a little more texture and dimension to the sheets, but you don't have to add this. I mean, you know, you could put just regular paper in there. It works just, just as good, really. Uh, you know, I'm just showing you something a little bit different that you can add. You can put cotton in it. If you take a cotton ball and chop it up real fine, a pair of scissors, put that in there. You want it fine, though, because you don't want it to clog up your blender. Nothing like trying to get all them strings out from your blender. 
So I'm not going to put much of this in here. Just just a couple little strips of it. Just enough to add a little dimension to the paper. There we go. Just chip it up in there. Then you want water. I brought a jug of water into the studio for you. Show you how this works. You just add water to the paper. And I'm going to fill that bowl about halfway up. And then we'll dry up where I dribbled. There we go. Then you take your stick blender. Now, if you got headphones on, you may want to turn them off because this might get a little noisy. And I first of all, Shake it down a little bit. Just keep making fun. Whoa. See what I mean by mess? <laughs> you have to unclog it once in a while because that pulp will get in them blender. Oh, making a mess. Okay. Now we got a pretty good pulp going there. You can always add more paper to it if you want to. But like I say, it is better to have more water than it is pulp. So you don't, you're not messing with a dry mix. Now I'll set that down here on my draining towel and I'll get another towel up here to clean up the mess that I just made. But you see what I mean when I say that this is a messy process. Best done outside. But see as I soak that water off of it, look, here's here's pulp that flew out of the bowl. Now that's fine. You just throw it back in there. But that's that's what we're after. Now, what do you do with it when you have the pulp? Well, like I said on my show last night, you can um, get a window screen, stretch it out between two lawn chairs, and then you pour your pulp in there, and let it drain out, smooth it out, you know, so it's it's uh, as thin as you want it to be for whatever project you're going to be working on. But for all intents and purposes here in the studio, I have another little way that I'm going to do this to, to give you a demonstration. I take an old jelly roll pan. There it is, an old jelly roll pan. And I took a screened desk organizer. Like you put in and out boxes on your desk. This is screen. You can see straight through it. These are still wet from where I rinsed them which doesn't make any difference to the process because the pulp's wet anyway. Okay. So then you take your pulp and I want to say just a little bit of this out for another little thing that I'm going to show you. So I'm not going to pour it quite all in there, but I'm going to pour most of it. I'll say just a tad of it back there. Now, say so you got, got your pulp in your screen. Then you want to pat that out nice and flat. You can do it with your hand. You can do it with paper towels. You know, if you're real prissy and persnickety about it and don't like getting wet pulp on your hands, but it, it just, it's like wet cotton is all it is. And just press it out. Try to get it as even as you can so that you're not getting a bunch of holes in your paper. Pull it back up off that jelly roll pan and push just a little bit. So if he's outside doing this on a screen, it would just be draining down onto the ground, water, and the grass for you. But since we're doing this in the studio, it's a little, little different process, just a tad. I'm going to press it out. And this is about roughly. A five by seven 
piece and you can while it's wet you can scrunch it up to make it um, is square or rectangular or round or heart shaped or you know triangular whatever kind of shape you want your paper to be you can do that while it's wet here pushing it around on the on the screen it's obviously going to have some rough edges to it if you got holes in it you can pull from the edge and fill in those holes I'll try to remember that I'm on camera here so that you can see what I'm doing. But I'm just patting it down, just shaping it a little bit and pushing the water out as I go. And you see how this works, just pushing it. It's like wringing out a wet rag, but you're doing it on a flat surface. Let's see. Hear that water leaching out of it when I press down. I do that, make some holes in it so we fill the holes in. Just keep pulling from the edges and poking paper in the holes it'll dry in there just fine all them fibers just meld together if your pulp is too dry it won't meld together that's why you want it good and wet now i've got um, some rags that i like to use for this process you can use dish rags, dish towels, you know, whatever you want to use. These soak up water a little bit better. So I like to use them. These are the, what they call them miracle rags or whatever, you know, you get. As seen on TV thing, somebody gave me a big pack of these a while back. And I like these for soaking up water and spills and things. We just keep shaping it however we want it shaped. If it gets too dry to work with and you don't like the shape of it, add some more water to it. Just pour a little water over it. It'll be fine. And there goes my phone ringing. And we'll just let them talk to voicemail. How dare you call me when I'm in the middle of filming? <laughs> Don't these people know I'm on a paper making mission? <laughs> ah, get her done. <laughs> Michelle, you better be watching this. <laughs> okay. Now, you see what we've ended up with? There's paper in on the screen. I punched a lot of water out of it. It is going to be very, very textured on the other side because it's on a screen and the screen is textured. See what I mean? There's the bottom. There's the top of it. The top of it's going to be textured too, but not quite like the bottom. Unless you take another screen and poke it down on that, which I could do. I ain't going to, but I could do that. But I'm going to show you a couple other things here before, before it dries up too much. Now, you can add color to it. I'm going to set it like that because I don't want it down in that water. You can add color to this. Um, I've got these spray things that I made. And I, I'll tell you what, I hate the spray part of this because the sprayer thing clogs up and it don't matter if you swish it around or what you do to it. But I do not like these sprayers. I'm much better off to uh, take the sprayer thing off of it i know it see it won't come out but as soon as i let it down it's going to go gushing all over everything now i swished that around in there this is made this is this is one of those acrylic uh, spray things that you make you use the alcohol and you put a little bit of glitter in there and you put a little bit of uh acrylic paint in it to make your spray 
and then the sprayer never wants to work it wants to clog up with the acrylics and I'm going to add a little bit of this to my paper this particular color is called summer sky and it's a green looking color there and we kind of blotch that around a little bit whoops putting the wrong thing on the bottle there we go you can add whatever colors you want you can add whatever um, let's say this is a called a green forest color let's use a little of that on there too okay that's kind of pretty don't you think now we'll use um, grab me a paintbrush from up here there we go just a little paintbrush and I'll see if I can kind of dab that around just a little bit kind of blend it in some now it will not dry as bright as it looks right now it will be dulled down just keep punching it in there make it look interesting cool beans cool beanies on your hot weenies now let's see what do I want to do to this next um, oh I know I brought some fiber up as I said in my other video I do spinning where you spin wool into yarn and you start out with wool you dye it or not as the case may be and then uh, then you make roving out it or have roving and you take the roving and you put it through the spinning wheel and that's what gives you yarn now I brought a little bit of this up and I'm going to add just a little bit of roving this is wool and I'm going to tamp that down into the paper pulp to give it a little more interest. Now, my, my paper's getting a little bit dry for soaking it, that fiber up into it. So I'm going to mist it with some water here to wet my fiber down. Push that right into the paper and maybe a little bit more over here on this side i've just taken wisp of it now you could add thread you could add yarn you know whatever turns on then i had some of this this has not been turned in roving this is wool locks that have been dry, dried the locks that come right off the the sheep i pulled them off and they washed it and they made uh, some dye up and pour dye on it. And you don't want much, just a little bit. Just enough to add some interest to your paper, a little dimension. I can see this being like a real pretty tag for a package or in a journal. There again. It needs a little more water on that fiber. Let it down and tamp it down to the fiber of the paper. Okay. That is about as good as that is going to get for me. I like that because when you trim down the edges of it, after you, you get it off of there or tear the edges a little more, whatever you want to do to texturize your edges, that will be just perfect. So we're going to let that dry. And while we're waiting on that, I'm going to move this over just a little bit because I want to show you something else. Well, as a matter of fact, let me move this out of the way completely here. And I'll show you something else. Whoops. 
I've just got all kinds of bells and whistles going off here. Let's give that to Hush. My goodness. You'd think that I was important. <laughs> Next thing we're going to do here is show you another little thing you can do. These are molds. Paper molds, or you could use these for your, um, and now my mind's going to go blank. Um, the, well, I'll be dog and I can't think of the name of it. Um, resins and stuff that you use. I prefer to make paper in them. If something goes wrong, it's easier to dig the paper out without damaging your molds than it is if you're using resins. Uh, you can use these with clay. Now, you need to prep your mold before you put the paper in it so that it will release well. And the best way to do that, I have found, is if you use a little talcum. I've got two of these molds here. But I just put a smidge of talcum in them. One of these is a goose or a duck. I guess it's a duck. And one of them is a um, scotty dog. And I just take my, my brush and I brush that all in good and brush the excess out of the mold. But it works as a mold release to help get your paper out of the mold. Do not try to remove the pulp from the mold until it is completely dry. Otherwise, it is going to tear and you're going to have a mess. So, and you don't want to leave a lot of powder in there, although it will be so soaked up by the pulp, but it kind of messes. If you leave too much powder in it, it messes with your um, design in the mold. So I try not to leave too much powder in there. I, I don't want it all completely out, but I just want to dust it. You see how I'm doing that? Just get in those nooks and crannies there and, and just dust it out some. Okay, now I'm going to take the so we're up a reg and wipe the excess powder there off. Then we left a little bit of pulp in this bowl. And I just rake some of that up with my fingers and press it into the mold, making sure to press it down into all those little intricate slots in that mold real well. Because we want that mold completely filled. And once you get the mold filled up, you're going to blot some of that water out of it and go to packing it down because you want it very, very firm. So we'll leave that one to one side and we'll work on this other one a little bit and get it over here. These are Rycroft molds, and I'm not sure if they make them anymore. I've had these since Hector was a pup. Um, I used to have a whole lot of them, and I sold off a whole bunch of them years ago. You know, you kind of get in things, then you get out of things, de-stash, and then you get back into things and wish that you'd had the stuff you got rid of. Um, but I kept these two back because they make nice little package embellishments. You can, once these are dry, you can paint them with paint acrylic paint, um, spray paint them, leave them as they are, whatever you want to do there. And if you have um, paper pulp left over, you know, like a whole bunch of it, maybe you over, way overestimated your screen, you can either throw it out or you could put it in a Ziploc bag, keep it in the refrigerator for a few days, you know, and then when, uh, when your stuff comes off the screen, just uh, get your bag out and pour more pulp in your on your screen. Now I'm going to push down on that, pack that in there really good. Now, you see, I press down, and 
hopefully you can see it pressed it way down into that mold left it kind of recessed i'm going to fill that back in just take your fingers and rake some of that out of that water press it in there I take my rag and i press down again press good and hard soak the water up out of that and i'm going to take all this that's kind of pushed out on the mold and I'm push it down in there make sure you're to the edges of your design I hope I push that out of the way now, wouldn't it? Let's see. Break a little bit more out of there and tamp that in. Now, once it's really good and dry, you take your blade or um, stylist or something right next to the edge of it in the mold, and it should pop right out of there. You shouldn't have to be doing a lot of digging to get it out once it's good and dry. If it doesn't come out, uh, leave it alone. Let it sit and dry for a few more hours and try it again. It may take even a day or two, depending upon how wet it is, what it, the humidity conditions are, where you, you are. This is not a process that you rush. Pushing it down in there. And then if when you unmold it, it turns out that you didn't get the edges, you know, real clean and crisp around uh, the edge of your design, you can trim it down. It's paper. You could you could add dye to the pulp before you put it in the mold if you you know if you wanted it all to be a specific color. Um, it's up to you on what you want to do. It's sky's the limit. There's no right or wrong way to make paper. I mean, this, I'm just showing you the way I do it. I'm sure you get to experiment and you'll come up with a million other ideas that you like to add to it as well. Um, things that. Maybe I've never thought of. I'm just telling you the way I do it and what has worked for me. I mean, you can use brown paper bags to make paper. Uh, all kinds of stuff that you can use. Keep scraping at that pulp. Get enough to fill that up good. Pressing it down. Okay. Duck, duck, goose. All right, so there's two molds, and I know it probably looks kind of nasty the way it's sitting there, but it'll be pretty when it comes out of the molds. That is how you make the paper. Now, I'll come back when I uh, am ready to unmold it and uh, take it out of the tray, and we'll see what we have ended up with. We'll see if you like it, if you don't like it, uh, if you have a better way to do it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and we'll, we'll go from there but uh, I'm just showing you the basic way that I make paper and how I've done things so um, there you have a paper making 101 and we'll come back with uh, uh, 1.2 when uh, when we're ready to unmold it